me wrong. Okay, folks, now we're going to talk about the trapezoids and kites. Um, remember in quadrilaterals we had parallelograms, and then we have the trapezoids and kites. So trapezoids have one set of parallel lines, right? Only one instead of two. And then kites actually um, have consecutive congruent sides. So let's talk about the different properties of these two. The first thing we have to talk about is right here, a trapezoid, so this would be trapezoid, is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. The parallel sides of the trapezoid are called, and you can probably tell from the picture, the bases, and the non-parallel sides are called the legs. The two angles that share the base of a trapezoid are called the base angles. Okay, and a trapezoid has two pairs of base angles. It has the top base, you see these right here, and then the bottom ones as well. Yes? Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the isosceles trapezoid. So, if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, okay, then each pair of base angles are congruent, okay? Meaning that, and remember isosceles means it has two congruent sides, right? If these two legs are congruent, then what happens is these two bases will be congruent and then these two bases will be congruent, okay? Who can tell me what the relationship would be between angle R and angle T? Yeah, absolutely, they'd be supplementary, good. And we call those either same side or what? Consecutive interior, very good. Okay, so then the next thing we want to talk about is how do we find those angle measurements? Well, if we look at this one, we are already given that this angle right here is 65. So what's going to be the congruent base angle to angle C? Angle F. So this one's also going to be 65. Good. How can I find either angle D or angle E at this point? Right, so I would say that the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle D equals what? 180 degrees. Then I can substitute 65, right, since I know that that's the measure of angle C. Okay, and what's measure of angle D going to be? Yeah, 115. Now, once I have angle D is 115, what is angle E? it's also going to be 115 because those are going to be um, congruent angles at the top. Yes? Okay, so I'm going to pause just a second and let you guys work out number one. Okay, so the answers for this one would be angle S would be 106, angle Q would be 74, and angle P would be 74. Okay, so let's turn and do a story problem or a real world problem um, using these same information. Okay, if we look at this paper fan, it says that the second ring of the paper fan shown at the right, which we actually don't have an, a picture, but I've sketched it out for you, consists of 20 congruent isosceles trapezoids that appear to form circles. What are the measures of the base angles of these trapezoids? So we want to pretend that if we actually had a line that cut this triangle right here, that it would create this trapezoid here at the bottom, okay? And it tells us that we have 20 of them, okay? So if I wanted to find out what that interior angle was at the vertex of the triangle, how would I do that? I would take 360 degrees, right? And I would divide by what? 20, because there's 20 congruent triangles, right? If I divide 360 by 20, what did I get? What did you get? Did anybody get 18? Okay, you get 18, which means that the degrees right there is 18 degrees, right? Now, we're going to assume, because it's an isosceles trapezoid, that this is an isosceles triangle as well, right? So if that's true, how can I find the measure of these angles right here? Exactly. So I'll say 180 
minus 18. What do I get when I subtract 180, 18 from 180? 162. And then I'll divide that by 2 to get this single angle. And what did I get? 81. So this angle right here is going to be 81 degrees. Okay. Now, think of my trapezoid. What angles on my trapezoid are going to match that angle? Are there any that would match? Yeah, the corresponding angle is going to match. So if I say that these are parallel lines right here, then which angle is going to be 81? This angle right here. Yeah? So what does that make the top angle right there? How could we find this top angle right here? Yeah, it's a linear pair, so we'll say 180 minus 81. And what do we get for that one? What do we get? 99? Is that right? Okay, and so this angle right here would be 99 degrees. Okay, do you see how we applied those isosceles trapezoid properties to this real world problem? Let me pause for just a second while you can do a fan that has 15 angles meeting at the center. Hopefully you got 78 and 102 for that one. Did we get 78 and 102, folks? Yes? Okay. Here are your first practice problems. They're found on page 394, 395, and I've included them in your notes so that you can match them to the theorem um, that or postulate that actually um, explains how to work these. Okay? So this would be 7 through 12, um, and you can work on these uh, when you get finished filling out your notes. Okay, so let's go through the next theorem. This one has to do with the isosceles trapezoid. And the other thing we know about the isosceles trapezoid is that the diagonals are congruent. Okay, so the diagonals are congruent. Okay, what other uh, quadrilateral has congruent diagonals? The rectangle, good. The other thing we want to talk about with this um, trapezoid is that if you connect the midpoints of the legs, you will have a mid-segment, okay? Do you guys remember talking about the mid-segment in the triangle? Okay, remember that the mid-segment in the triangle was one half of its parallel base, right? Do you remember? Well, now we're going to talk about the mid-segment in the trapezoid, and it, too, is going to be one half, but it's going to be one half of the sum of the bases because now we have the two bases. So if you have a quadrilateral and it's a trapezoid, then its mid-segment will be two things. First, the mid-segment will be parallel to the bases, okay? meaning that MN has to be parallel to RA and TP, right? The second thing we know is that the mid-segment is equal to one-half the sum of the bases. Okay, so kind of like the triangle, it's still got that one to two ratio, but not exactly, right? Because it's going to be one half the sum now that we have the two bases, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, let's do a practice run and see how we do. The first one asks us to use QR as the mid-segment, and we are going to assume that these are congruent, and then this is the midpoint because the problem did say it is the mid-segment, right? So that means that QR is equal to one-half of LM plus what? PN, good. And then we'll just fill in the expressions for this. So that means that X plus 2 is equal to one-half of 4X minus 10 plus 8. Go ahead and use your algebra to combine like terms. And 
what do we get for X? I got three. I, yes, I multiply, I cleared the fraction. Did you get three? I got three. Okay. Yeah. Right here, folks, I went ahead and cleared the fraction by multiplying by its reciprocal, which is two or two over one, right? And that allowed me to not have to deal with the, uh, distributing a fraction. Now, having said that, one half does evenly go into four and two. So you could have distributed the, the, the one half. Either way, you should have got the same thing. Right, right. So what would QR be if X is three? Since QR was equal to X plus two, what would QR be equal to? Five, good. All right, go ahead and try to find MN. I'll pause for just a second while you work it out. Hopefully you got that X was equal to six and MN was equal to 23. Um, the next thing you should notice in your note sheet are some practice problems. Um, 13, 14, and 15 for this section, and they apply to this theorem, so go ahead and work those out. Let's talk about the kite, okay? The kite, and that is K-I-T-E, just like a kite, is a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, okay? So you notice that these two are congruent, right? This one and this one, and then these two are congruent. And there are no congruent opposite sides, right? So they're not congruent across. That was different than the parallelogram because in the parallelogram, the opposite sides were congruent, right? So now it's not opposite sides, it's consecutive sides. Does everybody see that? So if the quadrilateral is a kite, which this one is, then the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, then they are perpendicular. Let's use those perpendicular diagonals to find the missing angles in problem four. If we look at this kite right here, kite DEFG, we know that these diagonals right here will form a 90 degree angle. So that would make angle 1 90 degrees. Does everybody see that? Okay. If I look at DEG, or excuse me, I, I covered up. If I look at this, it doesn't have a midpoint. But if I look at this triangle over here, do you everybody see which triangle I'm talking about? that's formed with DG, okay, that's going to have to be 180 because of the triangle sum theorem, right? So I can say 180, right, plus 90 plus 52, right, plus 180 equals 90 plus 52 plus angle 2, right? Does everybody see what I was do, trying to do there? Okay, that's a great question. Watch out, I'm going to rewrite it. Ready? Because I was covering up the triangle I was talking about. All right. Ellie, look. Right here. See this triangle? Okay. Angle 1 is 90, right? Because of the perpendicular. All right. So, because of the triangle sum theorem, we know that they equal 180. So, 180 equals, right, 90 plus 52, right, which was given plus angle two, right? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So once we plug that into our calculator, what does angle two equal? 38, right? Okay. So this one is 38. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now I know that because this is a perpendicular line and they share a leg. Do you see that? These two triangles share a leg. And I already know that the hypotenuses are congruent. I know that this triangle is congruent to this triangle by what? Hi yeah, hypotenuse leg. Therefore, what does angle 3 equal? What's angle 3 going to equal? 52. this is, yes. Well, it only bisects this one, right? This is shorter than this part. 
Yes, it does. Yeah? All right, you guys go ahead and try to do number four. Okay, hopefully you found that angle one is going to be 90, angle two is going to be 54 degrees, and angle three is 36. Let's look quickly at this summary diagram and fill in the different quadrilaterals so that we can kind of have a good overview of what we're talking about here. All of the quadrilaterals right here fall under this diagram somewhere, okay? If it has two pairs of parallel sides, then it's called a what? Parallelogram, which is what we did last week, right? And then, of course, we have the rectangle and the rhombus. And if it's a rectangle and a rhombus, it is a square, right? On the other side, if it has no pair of parallel sides, then we call it a what? Kite. If it has only one pair of parallel sides, we call it a trapezoid. Good. And if it's a trapezoid with congruent legs, we call it what? Isosceles. Good. Trapezoid. Okay. Does that help you kind of view, overview of what all we've talked about thus far? Okay. Good deal. So the next thing you should have is 16 through 21 practice problems for this section. So go ahead and work on the practice problems um, and finish up practice problems for 6-6 six, six, and then move on to 6-7.